great teacher, great scholar, and a wonderful person, good person, a friend of mine, Jean Smith. The name is those of you who know the name, and uh, his giant in the Tibetan Buddhist and in Buddhist study in general, and particularly Tibetan Buddhist um, studies. He also contributed to Mindusili to print and uh, publish the rare Tibetan manuscripts. Um, he and I work together, and I personally be able to print about 170 some odd volumes of global tradition teachings in the last about decade or so in the 60s and the 70s. And uh, Jean is instrumental to be able to do so much, encourage a lot of people. Uh, because he happens to be an American scholar from Seattle, Washington. And uh, he and a Tibetologist, such as a person named Richard Robinson, was ambassador in, uh, not ambassador, sorry. He is a professor in Wisconsin. And a couple of Japanese professors who had a dual citizen between the, the, the I don't know, legal or illegal, I don't know. <laughs> Japanese and American um, uh, citizen. And the professors, some are in Japan, some are in America. And um, they all got together and found a way to spend American aid money that they give to India since 1947, I think, 47. America has given a lot of aid to India. And the Indian, those Indian professors, they, Diplomats are so great. I mean, it's a Gandhi time, right? And then Nehru and all that. They somehow negotiated with the U.S. and they don't want aid, they want to borrow. Uh, but they would like to only pay in Indian rupees, not in U.S. dollars. So, 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 the, so the, the money is accumulated so huge in India, is maybe sometimes U.S. has more money in India, cash, than that of Indian government. And because, you know, so they pay, they keep on paying to the U.S. whatever they owe in rupees. So, so zillions of them, and they can't convert them into any foreign currency because India cannot afford to. <laughs> so, so then the U.S. doesn't know what to do with that money. So, so the scholars came and said, let's, uh, let's print, let's, uh, let's reproduce the, the, the old Indian Sanskrit um, and the Pali uh, teachings and commentaries and all that. And then along with that, the Tibetan also came together. So that's why uh, Tibet uh, and culture has been, been able to really help a lot. Uh, Gene Smith is the person who did it. And he also so worked in the U.S. Embassy in New Delhi. Uh, as a representing Library Congress, and um, so been able to do all this. Not only a, a, a not only a Sanskrit, Pali, and the Hindu traditional cultures, but also the Muslim tradition. Um, so in Indonesia, as well as uh, as the Middle East, all of those old old um, Muslim 
uh, teachings, they are all dying away. We are able to print them and uh, make it valuable for, for 17 universities in the United States. Only 17 is interested. But uh, somehow, somehow, so no matter however the volumes they get, they need to pay only a thousand dollar a year, and uh, and because of this U.S. money available in India, they make use of that. And later, after retirement, he set up a, a library, biggest collection probably of a Tibetan library in New York, in conjunction with George Soros' uh, daughter as well as uh, Rubin Museum. And uh, he began to, to, he began to, to electronically reproduce all these books that he'd been able to print in India. He's an instrumental to print, and uh, he's doing that. And uh, while he's doing it in the last, he went to India, I was told, and I uh, came back on last Tuesday and Wednesday he's complaining he's not well and Thursday he passed away. So in one way it's also easy, one, two, three, boom. <laughs> so one day you come back and say, ah, I'm not well, some sluggish, and the third day gone. So whatever it is, I don't know in detail because I haven't been able to contact um, the, uh, any person who's been dealing there. And he lives like a, I mean, he's a true monk. He's not a monk, but he lives like a monk. Um, monk. And, um, and uh, he, was, uh, he was telling me a number of times he wishes that uh, he will, all his collections, he hope, go back to Tibet. And not Tibetan monasteries in India, he says. He always says that. Back to Tibet, real Tibet. And um, so, and uh, then uh, he also made it electronically available under so many uh, volumes. He came here last year for my birthday, personally, and uh, gave me a little box. And uh, so I thought it is a, a collection of uh, CDs or something. He said, this is so far what we printed. And it happens to be a little computer. And uh, I didn't even know. I said thank you and I left it on my table. And uh, then... Uh, one day I heard Jonas is saying, oh, Rinpoche has an extra computer. I said, no. And, uh, and uh, then I heard Debbie's inquiry, who bought it, who paid, where is it, how much is it? And that's what the Jonas told me. And then I realized that is computer. <laughs> and uh, until then, I didn't know. <laughs> It was a computer you can link up and, um, and uh, you can even upload, upgrade it or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, so I didn't know it was a computer, but it was a nice little box. I thought collection of his, because he produced this like DVD, CD type of thing before. So I thought it's a collection of DVDs or something. So I left it there, so I thought gradually I'll look out. So. Two days later, Yon is saying that's extra computer, blah, blah, blah. And then we inquired who bought it, how much you paid it, and all that. So, so anyway, so Jean died. And so we will pray whatever his wishes uh, may have, it will be fulfilled. And um, it's an easy way to go. So anyway, it's not really one, two, three. So Tibet and Tibet Buddhism and uh, Buddhist world lost to great uh, France.